We start the bulletin with transition to SHA, where the shift to the new Social Health Insurance Authority, that's SHA, got a boost after Parliament's Health Committee cleared the scheme saying that its queries about the multi-billion health digitization project have been answered. The committee made the declaration after the CS and PS for Health appeared before it to give a status update just hours before the October 1st rollout date for Shah. Now the clearance comes as questions linger over the criteria that will be used to determine how the informal sector households will be bonded to determine their annual contribution to the health fund. With just a few hours to go before the new universal health coverage through the Social Health Authority is rolled out and members of parliament still have unanswered questions about how the bulk of the membership to the system will be covered. <laughs> The Ministry of Health has indicated that those who are not salaried will make annual contributions to the fund. The means testing has been deployed and is being implemented. But MPs poked holes into that means testing instruments, calling into question the accuracy and criteria used to arrive at the contributions to be made by the informal sector households. So that is what we want you to tell us and we go and tell our people. Chairman, chairman, or you just see Germany. You know, chairman being German Mazili at times, he receives that a lot of pain. You can see for the rollout tomorrow, you are ready for employed people, you are ready for government schemes, but these low income people, you, you, have, you have to do means testing, it's still work on process. It's not in low income. Because you are not ready, you don't seem to be ready for that. Indeed, once you have, uh, once you, you are taking the variables, once you've ticked the variables, the amount and the percentage, 2.75, and then you'll be given the total amount to pay. And as we said, we have a, ma a means of payment so that we are not overburdening um, uh, the people of Kenya so that they can be able to pay for 12 months just like the ones who are employed. And we can assure you that this is 95% accurate. Um, the ministry says it conducted a pilot on the MTR in eight counties with a sample of 2,000 Kenyans studied to determine how those in the informal sector will contribute the 2.75% of their incomes. The ministry also says it used a variety of factors to determine these contributions. The material that is used to build your house and all those things, it is not one variable that is determining how much a household is supposed to pay. It is a number of variables, but I think now we are using about 17 variables, ranging from your source of water. That is what we, we envision, that every ma month um, they will be able to deduct uh, from what, what you're getting. So it will be almost similar to uh, the people who are employed. The MPs also questioned the implementation of the 104 billion shillings health digitization project and declared that the ministry had sufficiently explained the actions taken to grant that tender. Safaricom PLC, especially with other competitors in the market, uh, was identified owing to its strong capacity to manage and coordinate the project effectively. Safaricom PLC is the largest telecommunications company in Kenya and one of the most advanced in East Africa. The Ministry of Health highlighted Safaricom's technological advantages, particularly its extensive 5G network, which currently reaches 77% of the Kenyan population. <laughs> The ministry has already flagged off medical supplies to counties ahead of the Shah rollout Tuesday. Brenda Wanga, Citizen TV.